Okay, we just got the uh, bushings in for the uh, casting there. I bought these from McMaster Car. And what these are, are the uh, oil embedded bushings, the uh, centered bronze, and then they um, embed them with uh, 30 weight oil. So these will work good. These are a commercially available item. You can get them from many places. McMaster is a good source for them. But uh, so this is something that either Eric or maybe somebody down the road after him that has his hammer when the uh, pins may wear these bushings out, they get a little slap uh, slop in them. You can press these things out, buy you some new bushings commercially available and press them right back in and bring them to size. So these are the inch and an eighth OD and that's what we machined our holes to. And I looked up the specs of these. These are supposed to be made to uh, 1.127. So to give it 2000 press fit in there. So let's see what they're measuring at. It looks like they're right on it. Maybe a couple tenths over that. Did the wrong one there. Looking for the friction thimble there. So depends on where you measure it at, but yeah. It looks like two to two and a half thou over. So that should allow for a nice press fit in those holes right there. We will have to trim them a little bit. These are, I got the one inch. They had them in standard lengths, three quarter and one inch. So we got the long ones and we'll set them up. I'm going to measure the housing and see. I got the housing right here. So they were a little odd size and I thought they were uh, just over three quarter. So. Yeah, they're a little over three quarter right there. So I'll just set these up in a collet chuck, face the end off, chamfer it, and then they'll be uh, ready to go. We'll also, what we'll probably do, a uh, good little trick to uh, help aid in pressing in bushings like this is go ahead on one end, turn it down a two or three thousandths or, you know, just under whatever your fit is right there. Uh, back just a little bit, just put a little short step in it so that whenever you go to stick these in there, They'll go ahead, they'll, they'll line up in the hole nice and straight so that when you go to press, they're already straight and you don't have to worry about it pushing to one side and messing the bushing up. So I'm going to do that as well. Just machine a little step in there to aid in them, uh, pressing them in. So get these faced. I need to flap to one side and then we'll be ready to uh, press these in. We'll go ahead and get these bushings turned. I'll show you a couple of them here, how we're going to do it. Pretty simple operation. Collet makes it real easy. Just turn them all at one time using this high speed tool bit. Just get touched off, set a zero here. Come all the way in. Just watching my dial. All right, and then uh, I'll go ahead and turn that little step here like I want. Just about like that right there. Got a chamfering tool ready to go in there and we'll hit the ID and the OD. Just like that. And I think I want to go ahead and flip it around and uh, make that a nice looking chamfer on that side as well. Like 
that right there. Just have to clean them off a little. Right, and we'll uh, repeat that for all four of them. I've actually got two separate lengths. They're about ten thousandths in difference on the uh, length. Walking that step in right there by hand. to go we got our two holes here that we need to do a little flapping on just to uh, try to get that last thousandth out of it so I'm going to use my rod here with the uh, flat paper We got like we got about a half a thousandth out of that one there. Yep, we still got about a half a thousandth to come out, so a little bit of flapping, and these guys will be right where we need it. Been working on this side here. I'm gonna flip it around to do the other one. Oh yeah, we're there now. Looks like I'm two tenths over 125. So we'll flip it around and finish that side out. We've had our washer in there soaking for the um, for the tempering. Let's go ahead and pull it out of there. got all the bushings marked as far as the length that I want and I also marked the, uh, <clears throat> the housing itself we have 770 and 780 there so about 10 thousandths difference that little step gets it lined right up in there I've got this position about the uh, best way that I can I think in order to get it in there let's see I think I need to get some blocks in there. We need to block that up so I can get in there all the way underneath the ram. I thought it was going to fit in there better than that, but I guess it's not. It's going to be stubborn. Let me, uh, let me see what it's going to do here. I think we might have just enough to uh, press it. Yep. Just enough. about this side here yep all right so we got a 780 we'll put a 780 on that one there
Is this side going to press? I think we can get that one too. Yep. Set 80. Making some headway now. That one is going to be a little tricky. It doesn't want to fit all the way in there. There we go. Maybe we can get it like that. Okay, we got all of our bushings in there now. We are just about DUN. I was doing some checking after I pressed them in there with the calipers and looked like they were slightly undersized, so I'm checking them with my uh, bore mic right here. And we're definitely a thousandths to a thousandths and a half undersized. I don't want that to give uh, Eric problems with uh, you know cutting a standard size pin to fit in there and it being tight. So. I found one of my uh, hand reamers there. This is a 7 8 diameter hand reamer. And we're going to go ahead and use it to ream it to size. Just use a tap wrench on this guy right here. And let me grab my glasses. And this guy right here should bring it right to the size that we want. We're only going to be skinning about a thousandth out of it. Go ahead and run it through both of them and make sure they're both cut in line there as well. Looks like we're uh, got it where we want it now. The shank of these uh, hand reamers are ground just slightly undersized so that, you know, this is on size, this is slightly under, so you can go all the way through your part with it. And remember to never run these backwards. You'll actually roll the cutting edge over, maybe not with the brass here, but it's good practice to never run it backwards because if you do, it rolls the cutting edge over and dulls it. All right. Let's see how we did on our size now. Go ahead and give it a check. It looks like we are dead on it. That's showing two tenths over. Let's see what it's, uh, well, hey, what, I'll just stick it in here this way. Read it that way. Same thing. According to this, we are two tenths over seven eighths. That worked out perfect. Let's go ahead and get this other side done now. The very beginning of this, <clears throat> the front edge of the reamer is actually ground on a very slight taper so that it will start down into the hole. So that's why it goes in there like that. Just try to keep it pushing straight down. And when you turn it, just try to keep even pressure and not try to side load the flutes there because then it will try to dig in and cut heavy on one side. That's why it's best to use a tap wrench so that you can apply equal pressure to both of the handles on each side of the wrench there and just let the spinning action do the work. I'm barely pulling down on it just a little bit just to help push it down in there and uh, move forward with the cut.
We should be good to go here. When you go out, you just pull up on it as you spin it, and it'll spin right on out of the hole. Alright, same thing. We're uh, two tenths over there. Alright, and uh, we're two tenths over on that one there, so it looks like we're good to go.